Grace and peace to you. Today is Monday, September 21st, and we are taping this from Palisades Sills, a state park on the road between Eagle Nest and Cimarron. Jesus quoted Isaiah saying, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me to preach good news to the poor and bring release to the captives. Welcome to this time of prayer. My name is Kay Huggins and I'm the parish associate at Second Presbyterian Church in Albuquerque, New Mexico. You're joining a community of prayer, a community composed of close church friends and strangers unknown by name, a community that gathers early in the morning or at midday or even late in the evening. We're here to attend to scripture and to pray. This is our blessed time. So if you're new to these devotions, welcome and relax. I do most of the work. I only ask that you participate with an open heart and an open mind. We'll begin today with a prayer based on Psalm 145. I hope you'll read this Psalm sometime today. Here's the refrain. I will bless you day after day and praise your name forever. Let us pray. Merciful Lord, you are faithful in all your promises and just in all your ways. Govern us, for we are weak. Strengthen us, for we are failing. Refresh us, for we are famished abundantly bestow your gifts upon us, defend us from evil, that we may not be tempted from your way, but praise your name forever. Amen. I will bless you day after day and praise your name forever. We're beginning today with a, a serial reading through the Gospel of Luke. As you know, each gospel has a unique way of starting the story about Jesus. Matthew meticulously recounts religious genealogy, while John paints a word picture of a cosmic gospel. Mark sets the action in sets the gospel in action beginning with John the Baptist and Luke the consummate storyteller begins by greeting his reader, Theophilus, friend of God, and presenting a lovely birth narrative where men, women, and angels sing gospel themes to arrive at the gospel's first public expression, the call and ministry of John the Baptist. Listen first to the first four verses of chapter 4, and then to chapter 3, verses 1 through 14. Luke writes, Many people have already applied themselves to the task of comp completing an account of the events that have been fulfilled among us. They used what the original eyewitnesses and servants of the Word handed down to us. And now, after having investigated everything carefully from the beginning, I have also decided to write a carefully ordered account for you, most honorable Theophilus. I want you to have confidence in the soundness of the instruction that you have been given. And now chapter three, the first 14 verses. In the 15th year of the rule of the Emperor Tiberius, when Pontius Pilate was governor over Judea, and Herod was ruler over Galilee, and his brother Philip was ruler over Ithuria and Trachonitis, and Listanus was ruler over Abilene, during the high priesthood of Annas and Cephas, God's word came to John, son of Zechariah, in the wilderness. And John went throughout the region of the Jordan River calling for people to be baptized to show they were changing their hearts and their lives and wanted God 
to forgive their sins. This is just as it was written in the scroll of the words of Isaiah the prophet. A voice crying in the wilderness, prepare the way for the Lord, make straight his paths. Every valley will be filled and every mountain and hill will be leveled. The crooked will be made straight and the rough places made smooth. All humanity will see God's salvation. Then John said to the crowds who came to be baptized by him, You children of snakes, who warned you to escape the angry judgment that is coming soon? Produce the fruits that show you have changed your hearts and lives. And don't even think about saying to yourself, Abraham is our father. I tell you, God is able to raise up Abraham's children from these stones. The axe is already at the root of the trees. Therefore, every tree that doesn't produce good fruit will be chopped down and tossed into the fire. The crowds ask him, what then should we do? And John declared, whoever has two shirts must share with the one who has none, and whoever has food must do the same. Even the tax collectors came to him to be baptized, and they said, Teacher, what should we do? And he replied, Collect no more than you are authorized to collect. And soldiers asked, What about us? What should we do? And he answered, Don't cheat or harass anyone and be satisfied with your pay. Luke desires to write an orderly account based on eyewitnesses and various compilations of the stories and words of Jesus. Accordingly, he begins the divine action with John the Baptist, who at a specific time during the 15th year of the reign of Tiberius, was called by God into the wilderness near the River Jordan. And he was instructed to initiate a ministry of preparation. John was not the one to bear God's good news of salvation into the world. John was the opening act. He was sent to warm up the audience, to whet their appetites for more, and to instruct them in who they, as folks preparing to receive a, a word from God, how they should conduct themselves. His public ministry, as Jesus' public ministry, is launched with the words from Isaiah, introducing himself as a voice crying out in the wilderness, prepare the way for all humanity to see God's salvation. The first step was simple. Live a moral, thoughtful, hopeful life. John said, change your hearts and your lives. Then John showed them how such change would impact daily life. Speaking to everyone, he said, Share whatever you have and care for the poor. If you have clothing or food, share with those who have none. Speaking to tax collectors, Don't overpay yourselves. Collect what is authorized to be collected. And speaking to Roman soldiers, don't cheat or harass anyone and be satisfied with your pay. Such moral living did not guarantee anything. It simply opened hearts and lives to changes that were needed in order to recognize God's presence. And it still does. And so we pray. We begin today with the prayers for Monday. Let us praise. We praise you, God, our Creator, for your handiwork in shaping and sustaining your wondrous creation. 
Especially we thank you for the miracle of life and the wonder of living. For the particular blessings coming to us in this day. For the resources and beauty of the earth. For all gifts of human vision and skillful craft. And for the treasures stored in every human life. We dare to pray for others God our Savior, claiming your love in Jesus Christ for the whole world and committing ourselves to care for those around us in his name. Especially we pray for those who work for the benefit of others today, for those who cannot, will not work today, for those who teach, and those who learn, for people who are poor. And today on Monday, we pray for the church in Europe. Holy God, the world that surrounds us is filled with dangers and sorrows. And the world that surrounds us is also filled with beauty and your kindly love. How can we receive all this, the horrors and the abundant blessings? Come to us as we pray that the troubles of this day will not overwhelm and the joys of this day will bring us comfort. Help us dwell in good faith, dependent on Jesus' words of life and promise of salvation for all creation. Hear now our prayers remembering those we carry in our hearts as we speak their names into the silence. We lift up those whose lives are on our hearts this day with illness or receiving treatments or experiencing healing. We name. Bless these with courage healing, and new life. We pray for all who are mourning and suffering from grief, whether deaths came gently or by violence, happened yesterday or years ago, are growing more poignant or teaching new gospel paths, and we name. Protect those who mourn with your comfort and give them companions in grieving. We pray for those whose lives are changing by design or surprise, especially those facing difficult decisions, caught up in life events not of their making, touched by violence or disaster, and those struggling with domination in many forms and guises we name. Help each of your children to know your plans for them are for good. Bless our elders at home. Bless families separated by health issues and all experiencing isolation. We name. Bless us all with contented lives that all may know your nearness. We thank you for our many opportunities to serve others, even as we give thanks for the abundance of helpers in this world, remembering in particular all government leaders and all civil servants, all social workers, therapists, pastors, all essential workers who make our lives possible all who educate, and all who learn. We pray for all medical professionals knowing those we know and love. Carla, Nicole, Cassie, Sandra, Camilla, Feliz, Molly, Tilda, Emiko, Pat's daughter Toby together with her husband Boyd, Sandra's cousins Melinda and Marshall. 
As you have gathered us into families and communities, so bless us with light and love able to enrich everyday life and grant us opportunities to witness to Christ's amazing grace. Use us, your joyful people, that the prayers we offer will bring your realm into our world. Let us pray together our Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. And now may the grace of God be with us all now and forever. Let the people say, Amen. Bless the Lord. Let the people say, The Lord's name be praised. And now, as beloved children of God, know that today has been designed especially for you, that you might both bless another and receive a blessing in return. Remember the refrain from Psalm 145, I will bless your name day after day and praise you forever. And now, until we pray again, in so far as it depends upon you, live peaceably with all.